Hi everyone and welcome to my home. I am Victoria A. Wilder, author of Lullaby of the Lilla Two, which is out now. You can get it on Amazon, you can get it with Kobo Books, you can get it through Barnes & Noble Books. Um, if you go to your local library and ask them to get it, you can probably get it from there. So, you know, go to your favorite stores, your local stores, ask them to get it if you can't find it. You can get it anywhere, they just have to go and order it. So, order my book, it is available now as of May 26, 2019. As you may know, Lullaby of the Lilla 2 is a self published novel. It is what I am calling indie. I'm not sure if that's like, there's some people who I think see a difference between indie and self-published. For me, they're basically interchangeable. Um, so this is an indie published book under my nom de plume or my my company name, Made in Circle Publishing. And I think I did a really, really good job considering I designed the cover. I had I hired someone to actually make it, but I came up with the design for the cover. I did all the formatting myself. I, you know, I did all the things to get it online. I paid all the money for editing. You know, it was, and it was an effort, you know, I had beta readers, I had people who helped me, people who were supportive, people who helped me bounce ideas off of, and of course I had a professional editor take a look at it and deal with it for me, and I, you know, hired, like I said, someone to actually make the cover, so I didn't do everything just by myself, but I was kind of heading that process, and obviously I wrote the book and formatted it the formatted it myself and actually did went in and did the editing like my editor pointed out things that needed work but I actually went in and did that so it does feel like I this is a me project this is me my heart and soul went into this book but throughout this process I have learned a lot about the publishing industry and so I just kind of have some questions for indie authors out there. So if you're an indie author, please let me know in the comments what you think about these questions. If you have any opinions or ideas, I am going to try to see if I can answer some of these questions myself as I, as I work through figuring these things out. My first question is, of course, how do people who don't rapid publish make money? Like, how do you make a living if you're not publishing a book every month? Because in certain groups online and in certain writing circles, the idea is that the only way to make any kind of living, any kind of money as a writer is to put out a book literally every single month. There are writers who put out books every three weeks. And I really always just kind of question whether or not this is like, what's the quality of those books, you know, because there's something that when I write, I have to take time there, I have to spend a lot of energy and a lot of time and put in a lot of my spirit to really work through things. And even if, you know, it's something like genre fiction, like Lullaby of the Lilla Two, which is total fiction, it's not something that's you know, going to win any sort of literature awards, or maybe it won't, who knows, but it's, it's not this huge life-changing memoir type of thing that I see in award-winning fiction. So even with like with genre fiction, people think that you're supposed to be writing a book every month, but with even something like this, I can't do that. I'm a very slow writer. It takes time, it takes energy, it takes patience for me to get a book out. This one took years. My next coming books hopefully will only take about a year each because, you know, I'm trying to write faster. You really can't make a living if you're publishing a book every two to three years or four years or five years apart. I understand that, but every month seems like a lot. So how do writers make money when they are not rapid publishing, when they're slow writers like I am? I personally subscribe to the Joanna Penn method. So Joanna Penn is a, if, you, if you're an indie author and you haven't heard of her, go check her out. She's got amazing, amazing advice. She's got these wonderful podcasts. She's got little advice clips. If, you follow, if you're if um, you supporting her on Patreon, then you get an extra Q&A every month where she just answers all your questions and helps people understand what it really means to be a successful working long-term indie author and publisher. So I really, really respect her and I really, really love 
her business model. Joanna Penn has about 20 or so books out. She's been in the industry for about 10 years. So that means she's publishing approximately on average two books a year. That is not very fast by these other standards that I mentioned earlier, but that's kind of the speed I'm hoping to go at. I want at least two books a year, whether they are nonfiction, whether they're novels, novella, um, fiction things, whether it's a uh, anthology of short stories, maybe another poetry book, maybe that's in the works, who knows. Um, so I would really like to kind of publish and make a living on about two books a year plus a bunch of side stuff. And that's really Joanna Penn's thing, is the side stuff along with your writing. It's multiple streams of income. She talks about it all the time and I really, really love that idea because I don't want to just be one thing. I've never been comfortable with just having one path for myself. I've always wanted to do just more in general. So with something like finding multiple streams of income, the idea is that you're building a business around your writing. So you may be doing speaking gigs you may be teaching a lot of writers have online courses I am even working on an online course although it is unrelated to my writing it is something that I do hope can bring not only more funds into my life but more of a spiritual community I am hoping to build a spiritual community so that's a little bit separate but it is another stream of income then there are things like swag, like I am really really hoping people love my book enough that I can make swag, mainly just because I want it for myself, and with that I mean shirts, bags, um, other articles of clothing, pillowcases, like there are, there are bound to be kids out there, girls out there, ladies out there who want a pillow with one of my characters faces on it, it's just gonna happen. All of these streams of income, all of these different ways of making money will be structured around my writing business, but I then also want to be able to make money off of my writing. Most authors on average make about six to $8,000 a year on a book. So if I'm publishing two, two books a year and each of them is making around, let's go high, $8,000 and that's $16,000 on its own. So I'm hoping to make up another like $40,000, $40, $50,000 with other side gear or side gigs and with the online courses, with gear, um, with speaking and all that fun stuff. So Joanna Penn is just kind of a great reminder that you don't have to write um, yourself to death. You know, you don't have to write every month. You don't have to write a whole book every month okay that's a lot that's way more than people need to actually do and a lot of authors i'm sure have some like backed up books that they've already written and they're able to do this rapid publish thing as soon as they decide to publish the first book and that's great that's a wonderful thing it's not what i did i wrote one book over a course of eight years and you know by the time i was ready to finish this book the only reason i think i was able to finish this book is because i decided to publish it so the ship has sailed for me on creating a backlog of books but i'm hoping that people will enjoy this book people will keep coming back to this book and finding the next books that come along the more books i write the more people are going to know me and know my work and like my work and the more I'll be able, the closer I'll be to making a living with my writing. My next question is, what is it that the indie publishing industry can do to gain more credibility? Because when someone says indie publishing or that they self-published a book, you're very, very likely to get a certain type of response that Either someone's turning their nose up to it or they're just like, mm, mm. Mm. you know, like there's like, oh, you're publishing a book and you're like, yeah, who's publishing it? I'm self-publishing. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah, like you get that response all the time and it can be very saddening because self-publishing should be a well-respected industry it's not new it's been around for hundreds of years many 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 of the great books that we have like as classics were self-published before they were ever picked up by like a professional or um a, one of the big publishers traditional that's the word i'm looking for so lots of people you know have self-published books over the years it's a common thing now and yeah it's really 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 easy to put something out that's not great especially with the amazon model 
know. Recently we had like the copy paste Chris situation, which Amazon unfortunately is very vulnerable to those kinds of situations, to people stealing from books or stealing entire books and, you know, just throwing them up on Amazon and making money off of other people's work. Warning. Warning. There's also a lot, a lot of books that come out that are that are indie published or self-published and they're not like there, there was no love put into them so a lot of those i think are the rapid publishers too where they just kind of write a book as fast as possible this kind of cookie cutter story that they're telling that they don't have any they're, they're not putting any care in it any soul or heart in it it's just they want to write they like writing and they want to make money from writing like it's it's i don't know I, it feels cheapened for me they're making bank. They're just selling these stories without putting in the effort and putting in the time and putting in what what makes the what makes books special. I feel like for me growing up, books were one of the one one of the few like fancy things I could get my hands on and I loved them, you know. Being able to read a, a cohesive story that makes a lot of sense that isn't just about the momentary emotions because a lot of books are about like making you feel excited, making you feel happy, making you feel angry. But just in that moment, by the time the book's over, you don't even remember any of that feelings. You don't really remember what happened. You don't really care or feel anything about about the characters. And you're not really interested in reading the next book in that series unless they leave you on some dumb cliffhanger that is just half the story. Anyway, to the point, how do we make our industry more credible, more acceptable? How do we stop getting those those dropped faces, those responses of, oh, you're self-publishing, so it's not going to be as good? People just automatically assume that self-published means low quality, and that really seriously breaks my heart. I think authors should have a personal responsibility for the product that they put out in the world. You should make sure it's edited. You should make sure you have a beautiful, well-crafted cover. You should make sure that the formatting of your book looks good so you're not having words like sliding off the pages or so that, you know, it's not like one chapter ends and then immediately there's like a number and the next chapter starts. Like that is just ugly. It doesn't look good. It doesn't feel like a professional product. And I think authors need to have some responsibility. I think we need to stop telling ourselves that it's okay to just put something out there that, yeah, story is the most important element, but the whole experience of reading a book should be valued. It should be treated as a special thing. And that means when you're putting it out, you should put out something that feels special, that feels good, that looks good, that, that you know, smells good, that just is... It's more than just the basic story. Putting out a book is this whole package. It's not just telling one story or telling a bunch of stories. It's not just entertaining. We have a responsibility as writers to express our, our viewpoints, to show the world in a new way and to take people to new places and to do that you want to deliver a full and enjoyable package you want to make sure it's edited you want to make sure there's a good cover you want to make sure it's professional give us something professional along with personal responsibility i can't help but wonder if we need something bigger something that is going to hold authors, especially indie authors, accountable for what they're putting out. I wonder if this would be considered gatekeeping because this is someone saying, hey, your book meets this criteria to make it a good book. But at the same time, I don't know if gatekeeping is a bad thing in this situation. I do think that authors need to be held responsible to for, for putting out a product that is professional, that is as high quality or higher quality than what traditional publishers put out. If there was a service or something that lets people know, that lets readers know that their books are meeting a certain criteria, that they are well edited, have a good cover, that the formatting is done, that the story itself is well done, 
um, and enjoyable that it's maybe high rated, would that be considered gatekeeping or would that be more of like an actual service to the community? But like, what would that look like in our community? Like, how would that take form? Would we have maybe, we have awards, I know we have like awards and things for books, but would this be more of something that authors can actually just go and have their book evaluated so that, you know, whether or not their book meets this criteria, they, you know, they know. And if it does meet this criteria and the, the website or the company or the group or whoever it is providing their service, um, they offer marketing, they offer like... Um, you know, something that's giving back to the community while helping readers and helping authors who do put in this energy, who do put in this time and this love and the respect into their product to kind of showcase that to the world. Would something like that work? Is there something like that that already exists that I just haven't heard of? I know there's um, Ally, which is the Alliance for for indie authors. Um, I know there are lots of, like I said, awards and things out there, but is there something that's like specifically meant to help people, libraries, stores, regular everyday consumers find books that reach that, that reach that high quality criteria that many of us who love books are looking for? What would that look like? Let me know in the comments what you think or if there are any companies out there that already do this that I should know about because I am looking for these kinds of places. I am trying to see if there's something like that in the community. So absolutely let me know in the comments. Um, message me on Facebook. My links are all in the description. So check those out. Another thing I think we can do to get some credibility in the indie industry. Indie, indie, industry. That's fun. Another thing I think we can do in our industry to get credibility is get our books into bookstores. A lot of people feel that bookstores, brick and mortar stores are kind of going out of style, but I really think that's not true. I've never walked into a Barnes and Noble that was empty, that wasn't like packed full of people. I have like, I walk into bookstores all the time. There's always someone there, except there's one bookstore that I go in that I've literally never once seen anyone there, not even the people who work there. It's There's always like a note that they're gone and maybe that's just the time I come come after work. Most bookstores have people. Most bookstores have customers. So I think that, you know, the idea that bookstores, that brick and mortar stores are going out of style is totally wrong. Lots of people, most people I know have a bookshelf somewhere in their home because people love books. People love holding books. They love reading books. They love the experience of having a book. So I don't think that they're going anywhere. And I do feel that indie authors who get into bookstores seem to have more weight more credibility so you know it's all about just making it so that society so that um, the mainstream sees us and respects us and knows that what we're doing is is here to stay you know this isn't a fad this isn't a trend this is here to stay it's going to change the writing industry it's going to change the book industry and I think we need to get in the bookstores so that both they bookstores and we in the authors are keeping up with each other so that we're all working together and we're all working to expand our industry. Uh, that leads me to my next question. What's in the future for the indie writing industry? Like what is, what's gonna happen for indies? And like I said, I think we're just expanding. I think we're gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger until we are the mainstream, until most books are indie published. It's already a pretty competitive industry, but I think it's going to get even more competitive. More people are going to be coming out with high quality books. More people are going to be making things that are rivaling traditional published books and also are kind of dimming those less quality books that are indie published, that are self-published. So more people are going to be making better books. People are going to be making more books. And this industry as indie writers is just going to keep growing and it's going to be beautiful it's going to be amazing i think we're going to change the industry i feel like writers have a huge responsibility for our world we have a huge responsibility for the way people understand things like everything that you know you probably learned it because someone wrote it okay anything you saw on tv the news was written tv shows obviously written um even real like what are they called um 
uh, reality shows, <laughs> even reality sh reality shows are scripted. So like everything, every bit of media that you get, every bit of information that you receive was probably pre-written by someone or created by someone who writes. So like writers affect our world in a really serious way. And I think the more we understand that, the more we put respect into our into our practice the more we put love into our practice the better and bigger it's going to be i really think that someday there will be um you know a celebration throughout oz i mean someday there will be no longer a mainstream separation when it comes to indie published and traditional published i think it'll just be really really good books and books that clearly weren't as cared about, which which are still popular. You know, lots of people out there love those books. They love junk books, books that weren't well written, but are entertaining and are easily forgettable. But I feel like for serious indie authors who want to do this long term, who have who have their souls in this practice, who have their souls in the art of creating novels and creating works like this. I think we are going to become the new mainstream when it comes to to the book industry. And I think that's going to be beautiful. I'm really, really excited for it. Let me know your opinions. What do you think about these questions? What do you think is going to happen with the indie industry in the next 5, 10, 25 years? Like, what do you think we're going to be or where we're going to go? And how do you think we can add more credibility and make a living as writers in this world? Um, just as technology changes, as the industry itself changes, as we change, as people, as society goes through what it's going through. Just what do you think is our outcome? Where do you think we're going? Let me know in the comments. Like and subscribe if you haven't yet. If you have, thanks so much. Click that bell so that you can get notifications whenever there is a new video. I will see you next week. Make sure you've gone and bought my book. Go to bookstores and like order it. Ask your lo local librarian to order it anywhere you go. Get Lullaby of the Lilla 2 if you're into vampires, if you're into love, if you're into dysfunctional families, and if you're into blood. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time. Bye. Hey. Did you just puke on my bed? Oh, bro, see? You gonna do more?